I was really impressed by the work you do. Your mission is about living your purpose to give back. And so yes. I wanted to talk to you about what you do um, and, and how you think that applies to Mrs. Hamer's legacy and, and all of our legacies in terms of making the world a better place. So I serve as vice president of community affairs for State Fair of Texas. But in addition to that, I teach at Tulane and uh, Antioch University. I'm an, I'm an author. You know, I speak, I do a lot of different things, but all of them are centered in this idea of how do you help people be their best um, and trying to make the world a better place at the same time and doing that. And Miss Fannie Lou Hamer, oh my God, to see this woman who fought to vote and even got beaten in the process of fighting for her rights so that other people could benefit from it as well. And then to see that at the you know end of her life, she's like one of the greatest people in Mississippi's history. I look at her life as inspiration, that if this woman can do all of the things that she did to try to make it better for all of us, then my God, what am I doing if I'm not trying to live in that same vein? Uh, being one of the co-founders of Heritage Giving Circle, which is this first um, Black women's giving circle in the state of Texas, it really for us was about um, making sure that organizations led by Black women had access to funds. Because in this country, 0.6% of all funding goes to organizations led by Black women. And so we saw so many, you know, sisters on the ground doing this work, but they weren't getting the support that they needed to do it. And that's why we started the organization. And so for me, it's really been about how do you change the narrative of philanthropy? Um, and how do we make sure that we're giving more access and availability to resources to folks that have the lived experience and are proximal to the issues? And I think that for me is what, you know, Ms. Hamer did was that she was proximate. It was her lived experience. And she wanted to make sure that people who were with her and coming behind her had opportunities that she may not have had access to. And so I think for me, it's looking at how do we do that in this space to make it better so that, you know, when I see women who are doing great work, they don't have to struggle as hard because they have the support from not only, you know, the wisdom and lived experiences we have, but we're putting money behind it. You have this quote that says, everyone with a title isn't a leader. And I thought that was significant because you have people who may have these big titles, these big names, and they want to lead these organizations, and yet they don't really have leadership qualities. And on the flip side, you may have someone like a Fannie Lou Hamer who is on the ground, grassroots, and doesn't have a fancy title, and yet makes an incredible leader. You know, I, I work in a community that is one that has not received the support that it needs. It's a primarily Black community. And there are folks here that don't have the titles necessarily. They're not in the newspaper here, but they are the ones that people respect. They're the ones that figure out how to make things happen. And that to me is what Fannie Lou Hamer was. You know, she's remembered for so many things of how she could mobilize people and what she said. So she wasn't somebody who had the PhD, you know, and had all the titles and stuff, but she was somebody who has so much experience and wisdom that she applied that to be able to make a difference. And that's the thing I think we miss. It's nothing wrong with getting the PhDs and stuff. I got it. But that's not a sign of, in my opinion, you're a leader. It doesn't necessarily even mean intellect. It just means for some people, you just have this body of work that you're an expert in and you know. That doesn't mean that you live it and do it in other spaces. You know what I mean? And so this was somebody who was committed beyond just herself and serving herself. She's committed to the greater good. And I think we have to recognize when we talk about leaders that it's oftentimes the folks that I call the salt of the earth, like she was, who are the ones who rise up for the occasion and not necessarily always folks with the titles and degrees, you know, behind them. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. That's, and that's the essence of of the film and that's in the essence of who she was yes um so then let's talk about how we all can can leave a, a lasting 
legacy. I mean, what are your thoughts uh, about that? What would you recommend to anyone, the takeaway for how we can make our own impact? I think it starts with knowing yourself. What is the thing that you love to do that you would do for free, mm -hmm. that it just calls you? And that's a thing that you focus on doing. It doesn't mean that has to be your full-time job. I think sometimes we think that, you know, purpose always has to be profession. That's nice when they collide, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. But what does it mean when you find that thing you love and it serves other people? Because see, when you're good, other people around you are good. So how do you focus on doing the things that you love and allowing that to bring other people into that space and focus on that journey? But, you know, one of the things I often think about is when I go to funerals, I've never heard anyone talk about, oh, they had this job and they did this. They talk about how people made them feel and they talk about relationships. I think if we focus on how we love people and serve people well, that's where the legacy comes in.